What's up everybody? My name is Gabe Deem and this is The Reboot Nation, a channel dedicated to helping people recover from porn related problems like addiction or a sexual dysfunction and raising awareness on the topic. This video is a Q&A response video where once a month I give answers to my Patreon supporters that ask me questions. So if you have a question on the topic of porn's effects or recovery that you would like me to answer, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Gabe Deem. And I hope y'all find this video helpful. For those that support me, thank you very much. Much love. Bye. All right, let's dive right into the first question about a flat line. He asked, so I stopped PMO on August 1st of 2020 and relapsed on August 25th. A few days later, I lost my libido, but I didn't know something like this could happen, so I didn't understand it and thought that everything was fine. Two months later, I met my girlfriend and started masturbating because I thought I would be extremely horny, but it was far from the truth. A few weeks later, I realized I had no sex drive for the last three months and I couldn't get it up. Then I spent three months without masturbating, but nothing changed. So, in late February, I started masturbating again to see if I can wake up my sex drive because I'd been with my girlfriend for like five months and I can't do anything. So yeah, I have no libido for the last six to seven months. I really don't know what I should do. I'm really desperate and I need some help and guidance. I'm 18 years old and can't get it up and I have no urges to even masturbate. I don't know if it's a flatline or what it is, but if you can tell me what you think I could do to get my sex drive back and live like a normal teenager, that would be helpful. All right, since you don't even have an urge to masturbate, it does sound like you could be in an extended flatline period during your recovery. And I'm not really sure based on your question how much rewiring you've done. So the first thing that I would tell you is you likely just need more time and you need more rewiring. I suggest reading the Your Brain on Porn article titled Young Porn Users Need Longer to Recover Their Mojo. I will link it in the video description below for you. And I also recommend, if you haven't watched it already, I made a flatline video last year that covers pretty much everything that I can say on the topic of flatlines that hopefully you can find beneficial. And the second thing that I would tell you is know that young rebooters like yourself have frequently reported that they need well over six months to get out of the flat line. I myself was in a flat line for six months when I was um, 23 years old and many other rebooters have needed over a year to uh, get out of the flat line and recover. So just be patient and don't lose hope of that, that other guys have been through this terrible, sucky situation, um, especially if you're a young buck like yourself, and they just needed more time and more rewiring with their partner. And rewiring doesn't have to mean sex. Anything uh, touching, kissing, cuddling, massaging each other, spending time around each other, dancing with each other, all of those things will help bond you and release the uh, hormone oxytocin, which is essential for healthy erections. And doing all of those behaviors will benefit your recovery. So that was my that would be my first piece of advice for you is to continue rewiring and doing bonding behaviors with your girl. Now, other than being patient and continuing to rewire with your partner, some more practical pieces of advice for you. Number 1, avoid all artificial sexual stimulation and porn substitute behavior. If you're spending lots of time compulsively swiping around on social media or clicking through the internet, I'd avoid that. Remember, porn addiction is about novelty on screens, not seeing nudity in skin. If you're getting consistent dopamine hits from clicking around the internet, your desensitized reward circuit is not getting that break it needs to regain sensitivity and the conditioned sensitized pathways for seeking and searching for new material are being reinforced. Now, I'm not saying you have to avoid the internet, but I am saying you should probably avoid doing any behavior online that mimics your porn use. For example, 
clicking through girls Instagram pages and stories is worse for your recovery than going to a nudist colony and seeing a bunch of naked people. On social media, you're clicking around getting small rewards from your screen and at the nudist colony, you're spending time around real people. So you can see the behavior that would be more detrimental to your recovery would be compulsively getting rewards from your screen. Pleasure from screens leading to a disinterest in real people is the problem. So avoid all artificial sexual stimulation. Tip number two is to communicate. Let her know what's going on with you and let her in on the reboot process and the science behind recovery and porn's effects. I'll link in the description a great article y'all could read together too called Boyfriend Quitting Porn 5 Tips. It would be great to read that and to discuss it with each other. Tip number three is don't force anything. Just go with the flow when y'all are trying to rewire or connect with each other and don't put any pressure on yourself to perform. Try not to have any expectations other than practicing connection and enjoying the moment. The, the lack of that pressure will be super beneficial and actually, in my opinion, speed up the recovery process because if you have anxiety of not meeting some expectation, that will just make things worse. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to communicate like I just said. And lastly, tip four is if you want to, after going an extended period of time in recovery, you can continue to practice what Paula Hall, a therapist over in the UK, calls mindful masturbation. This is done in three stages, according to her, where stage one, you just have a nice relaxing time where you take a shower and you, you know, wash your body off and just really almost in a meditation type way, focus on how it feels to clean your body. Um, focus on the sensation and the touch that you feel. Stage two would be to do the same thing, but with lotion outside of the shower where you just slowly massage your body, focusing on mind to sensation connection that has been lost from you know mind to screen connection over the years. And then stage three would be to um, gently start uh, touching your genitals and focusing the sens uh, focusing on the sensations that you feel doing that. Uh, leading up to slow, soft masturbation. Um, but I recommend doing this without the goal of climax or anything like that. It's just to train your brain to feel the touch and sensation. I recommend doing it maybe a couple times a week, um, no more than a few minutes, and staying really far away from climax if you do become aroused. It's just to kind of get that system firing again if it's been asleep for a long time. And I'll link to Paula Hall's article where she describes this process in more depth. And just remember, be patient and keep trucking. All right, next question. Is the chaser effect something that only occurs when the PMO symptoms are present or is it a known natural thing which I can have after normal sex as well? By the way, Gabe, yesterday I reached my first year of PMO freedom. That is incredible, man. Congrats. Let's give it up. Now back to the chaser effect. It is a known natural thing. However, if you have a porn addiction, it can be more pronounced and severe because your reward circuit has been tricked into thinking that porn is good for passing on your genes and survival. Now, it's been talked about for a long time. Uh, in the book, Art of the Chamber, scholar Douglas Weil mentions that ancient Chinese Taoists talked about this chaser effect after orgasm. While they believed that consistent sex was essential for health and well-being both mentally and physically, they warned that excessive ejaculation might cause feelings of uneasiness and maybe some relationship disharmony, but they did notice that there was an excessive drive after climax. And so I think um, the chaser effect is just a natural binge mechanism that uh, is is to motivate us to get it while the getting is good, essentially. Our ancestors couldn't have sex whenever they wanted to and they couldn't eat whenever they wanted to, so when it was available, our brains motivate us 
to continue doing it and consuming it. So it just, addiction, especially porn addiction, hijacks that natural drive to get you to continue to have sex during a time where you can impregnate a partner and have offspring. So it's just hijacking, again, it's the same thing all addictive drugs do. It hijacks a natural drive that is for our you know, originally for our life success and the reproduction of our genes, it hijacks it. So the chaser effect is natural. It's just more exacerbated if you're a porn addict. All right, next question. Do video games make the flat line worse? Now this needs a nuanced answer. The short answer is I'm not positive, but I certainly think it's possible. I see the questions all the time asking whether a certain behavior is considered a relapse or whether doing X, Y, or Z will slow the recovery process. What you need to be asking yourself is what type of brain training led to your problems and are you repeating it? You want to avoid replacement addictions where you still get novelty and rewards from a screen. While alcoholics and drug addicts will tell you that they want more of the same to get the same hit and buzz, video game addicts and porn addicts want new and different to feel the same neurochemical rush. Newness heightens excitement. Video games and porn are arousal addictions where the addiction is to novelty and excitement on a screen. The variety and surprise factor of the content leads to the same old, same old being boring. And video game designers know the neuroscience behind this, which is precisely why you see the current explosion of battle royale type games where the giant map changes all the time. They introduce new guns, new characters. The way the circle or storm closes in on the game changes every single time. So, you know, there's no two games that are the same. The, the chests have different items in them. The uh, way and angle that you fly into the match changes. Basically, if you look at it, novelty, novelty, novelty in every aspect because they know that hooks gamers and keeps them playing their product for longer and longer. If the flatline feeling is having no motivation to connect with the real person sexually, I think it could be detrimental if all your motivation is still being wired into a video game to where all you want to do is connect with people socially on your game and level up a fantasy character on there rather than get plugged back into the real world and start to see reward and libido and motivation to connect with a real potential partner. So in short, yes, I do think that video games can be detrimental to a flatline, especially if you have an addiction to them or you see your use as problematic. Now, I think occasional use is fine, especially if it's um, with friends or family and you're having a good time, but I would highly recommend limiting your playtime and trying to keep it as social as possible and not compulsively playing by yourself while you neglect real life responsibilities. And lastly, I highly recommend reading the book Man Interrupted by Philip Zimbardo and Nikita Colon. I had the privilege to be interviewed for that book and Reboot Nation's mentioned in it. And I talk about my own struggle with video games and porn and how together they both hijacked my drive to pursue a real partner and level up in real life. And um, I highly recommend checking it out. There's a lot of good material in that book that I think could be really helpful. So... All right, next question. How do I deal with anxiety of thoughts that I will never be cured of the flatline and porn-induced ED? I go on your brain rebalanced, which is another recovery forum, every once in a while, and some posts on there are really sad of guys rebooting for like five years and still in the flatline. The first thing I'd say, and I'd say, I've said it a hundred times, and it's what got me through my darkest stages of recovery when I was in the pit of despair, is the brain can always change. Neuroplasticity can happen our entire lives. So tell yourself that when you're in those moments of anxiety. There's always hope. Number two is 
Guys have taken years to recover from the flat line, and so those guys that you're reading those long stories from might be on the brink of recovery themselves, and they might be at the end of their journey and right at that light at the end of the tunnel. The third thing I would say is you don't know everyone's story and all the things that are going on and other variables at play in their stories, like depression or something like that that's keeping that libido down for a long time, which is also why I highly recommend everybody, regardless of where you're at, um, if you're able to, go see a mental health professional, go to a urologist, rule out as many variables as you can so you can be sure that porn use is the problem. Um, or as sure as possible. Now in my flatline video, I talk about how you can be pretty positive if your penis was functioning fine with porn and then you quit porn and then you go into a low libido phase, you can be pretty sure that porn was the original cause. But you still might in and out during the recovery process go into battles of depression or something like that. So it's always good to talk to a professional if you can. And some of those guys might be struggling with that. I don't know. Now, getting into some advice I can give you is tell yourself maybe so, maybe no. It's a common phrase that a lot of therapists use um, for OCD where if you have anxiety about something or you have intrusive thoughts, obsessive thoughts, just tell yourself maybe so, maybe no, then let it go. Um, so that's something that you can do. Um, one thing that I'd suggest when you have anxiety is an antidote an antidote to anxiety is action so just take a step towards doing something that you want to do i highly recommend write down all the things that are stressing you out or goals that you have write down specific things that you can take small steps towards and then pick the easiest step on that list and start checking things off whether it's doing the dishes cleaning your room getting the oil changed in your car mowing your yard, any chore that you've been putting off, start checking off um, steps on a list, little dragons that you need to slay, and that'll help you build up momentum and keep you active, and it will suppress anxiety. Um, that's In my case, that's been super beneficial to me, and I hope that helps you too. All right, now that idea leads me right into my next question from the homie Jazz, and he asks, is there a quote or a mantra that helped you during recovery or that helps you to this day? And absolutely there is, and I'll give you a few of them. Um, the first and my favorite is, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. This quote is from Dan Millman. I use this quote in my biggest mistake addicts make video. And it really uh, captures what I was just saying, that a lot of addicts, a lot of people on the porn recovery community, you know, they're so focused on not watching porn. I, I've been 10 days, I've been 15 days, I'm, I didn't watch porn last night, and it's porn, 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 porn. It's thinking, you know, it's, I say, pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant, and you think of a pink elephant. The focus is on not doing something rather than what are they able to do. And I see that as a really big mistake in the recovery community, especially Reboot Nation and other forums, is that yes, counting days and stuff like that and staying away from porn is super beneficial, especially as an initial goal and just setting a challenge for yourself, that's awesome. But the main foundation needs to be what are you replacing porn with? What are you pursuing? What are you focusing your energy on? Um, healthy activities, healthy behaviors that will also help you um, get through any withdrawal symptoms that giving up an addiction can cause. So time in nature, intense exercise, socializing, cold showers, meditation, prayer, fasting, anything like that. Those are all beneficial. Some of them are beneficial stressors that help counteract that. And it's focusing, when you fill your schedule up with those healthy activities, you're focusing all of your energy on building the life that you want rather than avoiding the life that you don't want. And that's why that quote has been a mantra for me since day one and it still is today. And I'll give you a few more quotes. Another one of my favorites is from the movie Van Wilder with Ryan Reynolds. 
Um, the quote goes, worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. I really like that one because, you know, stressing out and worrying about something, again, without taking action, does no good. You have to write stuff down and take little steps towards fixing the problem. Another one of my favorite quotes is, if you're going through hell, keep going by Winston Churchill. And lastly, uh, a quote that some of y'all might have heard that I like to say is, no amount of porn can ever love you back. I think the biggest epiphany that I had with in regards to porn that I actually attribute my success to staying away from porn was realizing that porn was against my pleasure. I realized that Porn took from me the one thing that I thought it would give me, the ability to experience more sexual pleasure and the ability to spice up the bedroom. It killed my bedroom and killed my ability to experience sexual pleasure without it. I was dependent on it to function. So once I realized this, my complete, um, there was a complete sh uh, perspective change on porn. I, n I now viewed it as unhealthy rather than fun, exciting, pleasurable. I saw it as against those things. So almost, in a sense, the true hedonistic perspective where you pursue pleasure, you would stay away from porn if you wanted to pursue true hedonism. And so that was just something that blew my mind. Um, and it's the same reason, you know, I stay away from drugs or drinking too much or anything like that. Those things are actually against our pleasure and joy. And if we go down that route, we won't be able to feel any pleasure and joy in real life. And so realizing that really blew my mind. And I hope that y'all find that quote and some of the other quotes I just gave y'all helpful. All right, next question. I would like to know how porn induced ED erections with porn differ from real healthy rock solid erections. Well, an erection is an erection, so the mechanism is going to be the same, where the reward circuit in the brain signals a signal to the hypothalamus, which then signals a, uh, sends a signal down the spine to your penis, ultimately giving you an erection by um, trapping, by vasocongestion and trapping blood in the penis. So the mechanics are the same. What's different is two things. Um, the original cue to trigger the erection, so with porn induced ED, it's anything associated with your porn use, whether it's clicking to new videos or seeing your laptop or whatever gets your sensitized pathways fired up that ultimately send that signal. Um, without porn induced ED, you can get aroused by healthy anticipation of sex with a partner. When you have severe porn induced ED, a real partner skin, naked, laying in bed with you, touching you, that doesn't register as arousing. So that initial signal never is triggered. So that's one thing. And then the other thing I would say is the sensation that you feel sometimes can be different too. Um, a lot of guys with porn induced ED say they have low sensitivity in their penis because they've trained their arousal template to be primarily visual clicking and clicking and clicking to the screen to the novelty shock and surprise of what they're watching um, be, being a voyeur disconnected from the actual experience and then with a real healthy sexual relationship where you can maintain arousal with a partner you're aroused by everything by um you know, touching, kissing, the smells, the pheromones, the the experience of being with somebody and exploring each other, all of that and the anticipation of it triggers that arousal. That's how we're naturally wired for to be, um, to see real partners as rewarding. So, and then, like I said, that sensitivity comes back over time where you actually can feel more in your penis and throughout your body when you are aroused that can be desensitized if you have a porn addiction. So I hope that helps. All right, next question. Is it true or possible that rebooting slash nofap can increase your penis size? I mean, not like four to five centimeters, but maybe like 0.5 to one due to the fact that dopamine receptors, nerves in the penis, and the damage to the pelvic bone and penile tissue recover, leading to better erections and blood flow. First of all, I would say the vast majority of guys with porn-induced sexual dysfunction or a porn addiction don't have damage. They have conditioning in their arousal templates. So it's not damage, it's a rewired reward circuit or addiction-related brain changes. 
And my answer to does rebooting increase penis size, I would say no, I don't think so. However, I think it can lead to you getting to your full potential that you might not even know existed because you've been addicted to porn since you were a kid going through your adolescence to where you know you might have been more tense, less relaxed, um, have anxiety. Because of your porn addiction, you've never really seen uh, your penis the majority of the day in a relaxed state, if that makes sense. Um, going through the reboot process, when you gain your confidence and you begin to be more relaxed and you regain your sensitivity to the real world and seeing potential mates, that will lead to uh, a greater penis size when it's flaccid. Um, so you won't have to be so much of a grower, you'll be more of a shower if that, if you're tracking with me. Um, I think that is the underlying cause. A lot of guys say that rebooting increased their penis size. They're just really, for the first time, seeing what a normal, healthy penis looks like during the day whenever they're not stressed or tense from having an addiction to porn. So it's kind of like the common question that we get of, you know, does rebooting and nofap lead to superpowers? The answer to that is no, but quitting porn takes away your kryptonite so you can reach your full potential. All right, next question. What can I do to increase my recovery progress, especially during Corona and the whole lockdown situation that is going on? Beneficial stressors. Make sure you're doing consistent, intense exercise several times a week. Do meditation. Maybe uh, my favorite uh, breathing exercise is the Wim Hof method I mentioned in a past video. You can find that on YouTube. Um, take cold showers. Uh, learn a new instrument or practice learning a new language. Learn something new. Um, go on long walks to someplace new if you're able to, like a new park or some part of town that you haven't explored yet. Essentially, all of those things promote neurogenesis, the growth of new nerve cells in the brain, and that all will help you in your recovery. And also, those things, the beneficial stressors and behaviors will help combat any withdrawal symptoms, uh, symptoms that you may have from quitting porn. So that's what I would suggest. And also, be as social as you can, you know, following whatever guidelines you have to. Uh, if you can meet people at a park and keep your distance, do it. Um, or just continue to call any friends or loved ones that you have to make sure you're still keeping that social connection. So beneficial stressors, exercise, meditation, cold showers, learning something new, try intermittent fasting or fasting, and then continue to do whatever you can to socialize. All right, next question. I have a hard time concentrating on work and university and I have my final exams in July. So do you think if I stop now, I have a good chance of getting my concentration back and passing those exams? Absolutely. I got another quote for you and that would be, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So you have to have self-confidence. You have to believe in yourself and just take the first step of getting the material that you need to study and start writing stuff down. The withdrawal symptoms in the early tough stage of recovery typically only takes a couple weeks, uh, a couple weeks to a month or two, and you'll start to get a lot of that uh, mental clarity benefit, less brain fog. Um, I think before you have to take your exams in July. So I do think that if you practice those beneficial stressors I just mentioned, and you get through that initial. Uh, possible withdrawal you may feel, I think you'll have enough mental clarity to um, get the job done. I hope the best for you and good luck on your exams. All right, next question. I was wondering whether porn can cause delayed ejaculation. I've been struggling with this for a while now and I haven't attributed this to issue to porn, but now I am trying everything to get rid of my DE. I haven't experienced erectile dysfunction though. I've started to reboot now, so I'm wondering if I'll still have a flat line, etc. Many thanks. Yes, oftentimes guys with delayed ejaculation can still go into a flat line, but I don't know if you will or not because not everybody does go into one. Now, yes, 
porn use can cause delayed ejaculation and there's thousands of guys who've experienced delayed ejaculation from porn use and have recovered. So good news. In fact, the first longitudinal study that documented recovery from porn induced sexual dysfunctions was on a guy who could not get off with real sex. He couldn't climax and um, orgasm. And he was prescribed a reboot, essentially, by his uh, urologist. And after eight months, he regained his ability to um, function uh, normally with real sex again. He regained his ability to climax and recover from delayed ejaculation and orgasmia. Now, typically guys that edge to porn and seek and search for the perfect scene to finish to, you know, they take their time during their porn sessions. Those are the guys that typically will develop delayed ejaculation where you train your brain to take its time and need a certain level of stimulation and a certain, um, a certain stimulus, porn, to reach climax, to where when you have real sex, your arousal and excitement just can't get there. And you have to either fantasize about porn or use porn and finish yourself off with your own hand. Typically, that happens in guys that have longer porn sessions where they um, take their time. They train their brain to need a while and to need a lot of stimulation to get off, um, but not always. And recovery from delayed ejaculation is the same as erectile dysfunction. You need to give your reward circuit rest so you can regain sensitivity and let the sensitized pathways wither away and weaken, avoid all artificial sexual stimulation, and be patient. All right, last question. For me, when I used to watch, I always had moral issues with porn, but I still persisted. It wasn't until you brought the health issues to light for me that I changed my ways. But in the last few years, and the realization that porn equals assault, rape, child abuse, and trafficking, etc., I now see porn as the most revolting, disgusting thing in the world. So do you see this new factor being the one that might change guys' mindsets? This being the guys who watch despite moral issues and negative health effects. For the guys that still watch despite negative health effects, possibly, but overall, I would say no, the, the health perspective, knowing that the physiological negative effects from porn use, I believe is going to be the main game changer for most young men, um, myself included. And like you just said, the health perspective, knowing the negative effects is what completely, uh, you know, changed your behavior. I think that there's a few reasons for that. The primary reason is I would disagree that porn equals rape, assault, abuse, um, trafficking, and all that. And this is where I think uh, that's just a blanket statement that a lot of young guys and girls know is not always true. It's a statement that I've seen even tweeted out recently by some of my friends and colleagues that said, you can't make porn without abusing women. And the the post on social media just got completely ratioed because everyone was like, have you never heard of gay porn or, you know, hentai or cartoon porn or, you know, consensual married adults that are um, exhibitionists that upload themselves. So it's a blanket statement that just isn't true. And I think that a lot of skeptics out there or guys that are on the fence about whether or not they should quit using porn, you lose you lose the audience, you lose the chance of winning people to your side that don't agree with you when you say a statement like that that doesn't always apply. Now, what does always apply is a concept of neuroplasticity. Regardless of the genre that you're watching, so whether it's porn between consenting loving adults or if it's you know abusive rapey porn or whatever, it can still rewire and condition the brain. Um, in some of my presentations that I give, I always talk about this, where it doesn't matter if it's Homer and Marge Simpson going at it, uh, you know, consensual couple, or something that is unethical, all of those things can rewire the arousal template in the brain, potentially lead to addiction-related brain changes and cause problems. So regardless of the content, regardless of the genre, problems can still happen, and I think that point 
is what will get through to everyone, including people who enjoy porn and think it's awesome, like I did when I was younger. Um, knowing that fact of neuroplasticity, and it wasn't necessarily the content that um, mattered, really explained a lot of things to me um, as far as what I escalated into and also gave me a clear vision of what I need to do to recover, which is avoid, like I've said several times in this video, all artificial stimulation, regardless of what it is. So when you say, when guys ask if, you know, masturbating to Instagram pictures is a relapse, it's like, Yes, anything that's on a screen, regardless of the content that you're using for sexual arousal is the problem. And I think that that health perspective is going to be the foundation that will win everyone over. And then after you have that foundation, regardless of what your own personal moral beliefs are, then you'll have that young person's attention because they'll know that you're coming at it from a perspective of health and their best interest in mind, and then they'll be open to whatever else you have to say. So I always encourage parents or mentors that work with young people to start with the brain science, start with the health perspective, because it takes the shame out of the conversation, and they'll know that you have their best interest in mind, and you're not just being you know, judgmental or whatever. All right, y'all, that's it for this video. I hope some of those answers were helpful for y'all. To my Patreons, I love y'all, appreciate the support as always. To everybody else, if you would like to support me in the channel's mission of helping others and raising awareness on the potential negative effects of porn, please consider supporting me at patreon.com. And you can also go there and sign up if you want to ask me a question that I'll answer in the next video. All right, I hope y'all have a great day. Until the next one. Much love. Bye.